So yeah, James Tynan has a new book out for Image called uh, World Tree. Mm -hmm. uh, it's written by him uh, with art from Fernando Blanco and colors from um, Jordi Belair. Um, so Chris, I'm going to ask you this. What is World Tree about? Uh, stuff. It's about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to explain this book. It's... Um, mm -hmm. It, someone asked me the other day, what is mm -hmm. this book? And I told them, it's kind of like The Ring, except right. when you watch the video, a little girl doesn't pop out of a TV. <laughs> you are the little girl, and you go pop out of a TV. Perfect. That's, that's how I described it. <laughs> now, whether that's accurate or not, I really can't tell you. I can tell mm -hmm. you whether I like the book or not and all that stuff. But it, it's hard to nail down what it is because it, it is kind of a unique concept. But I think the closest thing we have to it might be something like the ring. Or that makes total sense to me. Yeah, but th there may be something else that's closer, where you know a, a character will watch something or even like hear something. That, that's actually maybe more common. A character mm -hmm. will hear something and it's a trigger, and then they do something. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen it even in comic movies with um, the Winter Soldier. You know. Mm. So it could be something like that. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting book. It's very unique. And visually, is it's uh, kind of spectacular, I think. Jordy <laughs> Miller's colors are really what sells it. Mm -hmm. Which is um, something I don't normally gravitate toward when we talk about comic book art is colors. Mm -hmm. But Belair is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the colors pop when they need to in this. And when it's darker in some panels, it looks phenomenal mm -hmm. and it's more of what you don't see too because it's just drawn so well if that makes sense sure yeah yeah and i i would agree with the colors as well specifically the settings where the yeah. colors change so like i want to say there's maybe four or five different settings in, in the first uh, issue mm -hmm. uh, two people in a car talking having a, a nice conversation it's nice and bright and colorful um there's a shot that goes back in, or I think a page or maybe two pages where it kind of goes back in time um, yeah. in the past, and that color changes. Um, mm -hmm. When it gets to a scary, bloody stuff, that's where some more color changes. Um, yeah, so in a roundabout way, something, a, a group of teenagers uh, created a web program or a website, I'm not <laughs> sure, and something happened. So then they shut the site down. And now... You know, I want to say like 20 years later or something. Something like that. Something with that site has gone live again and has made a certain person, in quotations, go crazy in a certain way and, and kill people. <laughs> they kill 60 people in like a day or something. Um, and there's this weird uh, woman walking around who is controlling them or is talking to these people somehow. I don't really know how it's going to go. And I was talking, um, second mention of comic guy Steve in this uh, in this show. Um, he talked about the books that he was going to get for for this week, and he didn't have World Tree on there. I recommend, oh, why don't you get World Tree? And you know, he mentioned, oh, I've been you know bitten by Tynan before, which we all have. Um, and you know, he said, I'm going to wait until the trade because I don't really know where, where this first issue is going to go. And I would say that's true for people who have even read the issue. Chris, I have no idea where this is going. I don't know what the, the I, you know, us talking it out and trying to explain what the book is is very hard. Um, like, it, there's a lot of subtext, subtext in this first issue about stuff that's happened before. Are mm -hmm. we going to see the stuff that happened before? Are we going to see what happens next? Um, you know, who are the heroes in this book? Because I'm not sure how there's one hero in the book, possibly. Um, the, the the one brother, but I'm not sure how he's going to make a difference. And the people who created this program of a certain kind are not likable people. Um, Gabriel, I think his, his name is. I think so. Um, yeah, so anyway, just this roundabout way of, you know, I'm not sure what's going on, but the stuff that I saw on the page was very, you know, had me very intrigued from the start of the, the book until the very end. Um, you know, we talked about this when we talked about the closet from James Tynan, where, you know, I was hooked specifically on just people talking in that, in that book, that his dialogue can be so good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, sometimes his ideas get in the way. 
um, specifically in Batman, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But like, I, I love Tynan's dialogue in this in this book very much. So the two people in the car talking, as we learn more about the family dynamic and um, more people just talking, and then you know, obviously with the addition of the great art as well. I think it, this is one of my favorite issues of this year so far. But I could also see it going straight down, like right after <laughs> this. Like there could be weird things no happening. Exactly. It, there could There's be a no sharp twin. note. Of, um, it's very interesting how it's going to go. But I, I was instantly hooked by this book right away. And, and yeah. you know, I, I hyped it up pretty strongly, you know, f for myself as, as before the book come out. So I'm, I'm happy it lived up to the hype. And now I'm just worried that it's not going to continue that hype, that hype train over the, you know, whatever, how many issues there are. I remember months ago when they debuted the cover, and I, I sent it to you, and I was like, what is this? And, and, you know, we didn't have any idea. And now mm -hmm. having read it, I think I guess I have a better idea of what it is if I think of it as, like, the ring maybe meets yeah. faces of death. <laughs> if anybody remembers what that was. <laughs> or it is. They're making a new one mm -hmm. or something. Um, mm -hmm. But what stands out to me, of course, is the art, the dialogue, and also just the flow of the story. Because yeah. I think, and, and this is still surprising to me, Tynan is a very good storyteller. Mm -hmm. The way that he layers these things just works. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I are both big on the closet. Um, mm -hmm. I've been, been big on other stuff I've read from like Nice House or Last House on the Lake. Was it called Nice House? I think it's Nice House on the Lake. Yeah, that was really good too, and it was layered with. Then it was also so busy, but even then, if mm -hmm. you kept reading it, it came together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what this is going to be. Something more mm -hmm. akin to Nice House on the Lake compared to The Closet. This is more like the, the bigger story. And what's mm -hmm. presented here is something special. And mm -hmm. it's also darker than a lot of comics out there. Because it, it deals with murder. And it's not as like, oh, someone got shot. Not not to take away from that, of course. That sounds weird. Sure. But it's grisly murders. Mm -hmm. it, it's like serial killer stuff. Yeah. You know? Um, there's a, a panel in here where <laughs> I don't I don't want to say about spoil I don't know how, how not to spoil this, but a character <laughs> opens the door and gets a surprise. Let's say, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not shown like they they don't shy away from it, and that's mm -hmm. that's what Tynan does I think in his creator own stuff, and that he's allowed yes. to do that and it works so much better than anything I've read him do for Marvel or DC. I, I think he's written Marvel. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. But at least for DC. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really impressed with this book. I think the the extreme nudity might be hard for people to get around. Mm. Just because it can be off-putting. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand why she is like that. Or what she is. We, or I, what uh, she is. Is she human? I have no idea. For all we know, she is the human version of the program. Or something. Yeah, I don't exactly. know. Or the yeah. website. We don't know. <laughs> and the tattoos that she has kind of makes me think, well, maybe she is otherworldly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it, it, it all comes together really well. And it's a nice package for, a, you know, you get a little bit of everything in this first issue to get you hooked. Mm -hmm. And as far as like it nose diving from this point on, I mean, that's possible with any book. But yeah. I feel like if we're just going to go off the, the stuff we've read from time and it's not his DC stuff, I think yeah. it's going to be just fine. Mm hmm. Um, Frank says, Tyne is one of my favorite writers. This kind of comic is in his wheelhouse. That's the way it seems. It seems like yeah. Tynan's more of like a horror person. Much yeah, like Scott Snyder is too, I think. Yeah, and I think the personal nature it helps as well. You brought that up, and I'm glad you did. How personal, you know, to me, the closet felt. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was sold as some big alien or monster story. And no, it's straight up just a... Um, you know, a, a toxic relationship, a abusive relationship story, a, a, a family story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I have a roundabout way that that's what World Tree is going to end up kind kind of being. Um, I don't, I don't like it. I don't see it being some world ending book. You know, where the world's going to you know all die. Even though it's kind of it's sold like that a little bit in this first issue, um, but I do feel like it's going to be very personable um, by the end of it. The other thing I'm glad you liked. Um, or you, you you mentioned was the cover that you had we had sent each other or talked about. And if you glance at the cover, oh. it's a. <laughs> if you just glance at the cover, there you, you don't really you know pay too much attention to it. You know mm -hmm. when we first saw it, we say, oh, there's a woman naked on on the bed on a computer. 
But then if you look down, you know, two feet under her, there's a woman that's dead and mm. bleeding to death on the floor. Like, just like this very subtle way of doing it. But in, in the book, nothing is subtle. Like, it, it hits you over the head with the, the violence and the, and the nudity. So it, it's not shying away. Maybe that's a first issue thing, trying to get people hooked um, on it. I think it's going to, you know, they delayed the book by two weeks. Um, I think they went back to the printer and tried to get as many copies as this thing out as possible. And, you know, I think there's like 6,000 variant covers to it. Which oh, is I haven't seen any variants. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a ton of them. Um, hmm. There's one, two, three, four, three, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Uh, there's another <laughs> nine rows after that. So, <laughs> yeah. There's oh, a lot. I haven't seen any of them. I've only yeah, seen the James main covers. Yeah, James Tynan loves his variant covers. It's the same thing for something is killing the children too. So, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I have to look at. It. I, I think the main cover is striking enough. I don't think you need much more. It's really good, um, for sure. Um, I love the colors in it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I'll talk about Jordi Blair um, all day. She's my favorite artist or favorite colorist. Yeah. Um, so yeah, World Tree. Uh, it's it's my fa my favorite first issue of uh, 2023. I'm hoping it keeps going. Um, I haven't seen how long it's going to be. I wonder if it's just a, a limited thing or if it's going to be um, ongoing. Um, I'll be interested to see how the story unfolds that way, see what kind of story tynan has got is, planned out. Is it something you'd recommend to people, though? I'd recommend it to people I know. Like like <laughs> I mentioned Cookie a whole bunch of here. We're talking about a lot of things that feel uh, kind of up her wheelhouse, like her or um, trying to think who else would like this book that I know. I think Lauren would um, like it. Yeah, Lauren would probably like it. Um, I think Chris from I haven't. Uh, I didn't oh, look yeah, at uh, Chris from Lost in Comics. I didn't. Kyle I didn't look at it. his top. Yeah, I didn't look. Yeah, I didn't look at his top three um, for this week. Um, but I think he would be a big fan of it as well. Um, if if you're a fan of Tynan, I think you're absolutely going to love this book. Um, I'm not sure about the uninitiated though, um, or you know, people who mostly read Cape and Cowl stuff. I don't know if that's. This is their their kind of book. I love Frank's comment here. This I think could be on the book itself. Like when you see the review uh, the review blurbs, mm. I really enjoyed it. It feels like a legit horror thriller book. Lots of comics lately claim to want to be scary, but they're afraid to go another step. This comic isn't afraid. Completely agree. Like really, this needs to be on the back or something. <laughs> Um, it, I like um, I like books that aren't afraid. I like artists that aren't yeah. afraid. I like writers that aren't afraid. That that that's They're a going great selling it. point. Yeah, and that's why I think from here on it's going to get crazier. I think we just got kind of like where monsters lie. I was just going to mention that. It's like it, it, you think that's crazy? Oh, wait until you see what we do next. Oh, you think that's crazy? Wait until you see what's next. So, <laughs> I, I think that'd be a great way to do it, and, and like not letting off the the gas pedal and kind of teetering along. But mm -hmm. keep ramping up that crazy. Keep giving us um, extreme violence, if, if you were, and keep keep pushing that story forward. So, yeah, and the I, way it ends, I think, that, yeah. I think it it has to go that way. Yeah, it ends on a <laughs> the last. <laughs> the, the, there's a three panels inside the last page of a guy looking shocked, the same guy throwing up, and then the same guy going, "Oh God." <laughs> <laughs> having, having what just happened in, in, in the last panel. I, I love Top tier comics. That ending. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Real simplistic nature to it. But a guy Beautiful. looking shocked, a guy throwing up, and a guy saying, oh, God. You know, <laughs> so. another thing, um, one last thing I want to mention, the paneling is very classic comic book. Yes, it, it doesn't try to be too much that way. I agree. Yeah, it feels like you're reading something older where there were like six panels to a page. So you're getting right. a lot of story. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, we've talked about that as well with ease of read. Like we talked about, um, you know, Andrea Sorrentino's books. Mm -hmm. when we were talking about the imposter, how his paneling is kind of all over the place. And, yeah, and be hard to be hard to follow. It's very easy to follow the book with the, you know, the it is. I want to say it is overly dialogue heavy at times. It's but tiny, it doesn't though. feel. But yeah, it doesn't feel like a like you're getting hit over the head with it. Um, like it's a real drag. Um, and, and I think that's because the, the, you know, the art is so good. The colors are so good. Um, yeah. So I, I think that works uh, all the way around. Cookie says she's going to read it tonight. If you, if you get around to it or after you do, let us know what you thought. We are curious. I, yes, I'm really so curious cool. how people are going to take this book because <laughs> I mm -hmm. haven't seen a ton of reviews for it. So I'm mm -hmm. really curious. I think it's great. 
you seem, you know, you're, we're on the same page with this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious what other people will think. <laughs> he says this chick is <laughs> making a cell phone. Like Myers would never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank, that's good stuff, my friend. <laughs> that's very good stuff. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so that's our thoughts on World Tree number one.